the swift, nor the battle to the strong, but he that endure to the end. We're going to fight. We're going to trust. We're going to obey. Till the end. Hallelujah. Go. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank and praise the Lord. Amen. Because we are soldiers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even though the Lord chose us, we volunteered. Hallelujah. Because it was our choice. But his divine choice gave us that, that opportunity, that privilege. Hallelujah. To be called children of his. Hallelujah. He's going to fight the battles. If we hold our peace, he said he will fight the battles and the victory shall be ours. Amen. We got to fight the victory over depression over resistance, hallelujah, over what we want opposed to what God wants us to have and be. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The war is within. The war is within, is, is, is within saints, amen. So we thank the Lord for his protection, for his power, for his guidance, hallelujah, for everything that he has given us because it was through his love that these things are in our lives. Amen. At this time, we'd like everyone to please stand up as we go before the Lord with the reading of the scripture today. Amen. The scripture is found in the book of Colossians chapter 3. Amen. Just one verse. That's Colossians chapter 3. Amen. Verse 16. No, let's add one more. 16 and 17. Amen. Colossians chapter 3 verses 16 and 17. When you have it, please say amen. Amen. Let us all read together. Let the word in Christ dwell in you richly and all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Amen. Well, let us go before the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for your love today, Lord Jesus. We thank you for, hallelujah, your kindness, your forgiveness, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the grace and the mercy that you've extended us daily, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your protection, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you for your love, Lord Jesus. We thank you for that peace, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. It only comes from you. And today, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, that you have your way in this service. <laughs> that you remove anything, Lord, that might hinder the blessing be done, Lord. Remove the doubt, the fear, Lord Jesus, the rebelliousness, Lord Jesus, the hate, the malice, the strife, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, the envy, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Let us walk together in love, Lord Jesus, in consideration, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Let us walk in forgiveness, Lord, as you have forgiven us, Lord, our sins, Lord. We ask that you deliver us today from ourselves, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Free us, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let your perfect will and way and your spirit, Lord, lead God and direct us, Lord. We're not doing this of our own, Lord, but it's in you we live and we have our being today, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Let your word, Lord, be that lamp into our feet and that light into our path today. We're praying, Lord Jesus, that all the things that you see done in this place and all the other places that are worshiping you in spirit and in truth, Lord, that you bless, Lord, that you, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, have the victory. Hallelujah, that you, hallelujah, get the glory, the praise, the honor, Lord Jesus, the reverence, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. You're great and you're greatly to be praised. We love you today, Lord, because you've already worked things out on our behalf, Lord. The problems that we had, we don't have to worry about those things no more. You've already taken care of those things. And we have the faith and trust and believe, Lord, all things are well, Lord, because, hallelujah, you do all things well. 
rest, Lord, that you move in the service, Lord, by your word that is being preached by our pastor today, Lord Jesus. The words that have been taught in our classes this morning, Lord Jesus. Let those words hide deep in our hearts and minds, Lord, so that we sin not against you, Lord. And that we be always grateful and thankful for what you have prepared for us. Hallelujah. We ask, Lord, that you use us today, Lord, as vessels of honor, Lord, to glorify you, to lift you up, to let the world know that you're still alive, Lord Jesus. You're not dead, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You're alive and you will live forevermore, Lord Jesus. And we pray, Lord, that our desire is to choose you so that we may live forevermore as well with you, Lord. We ask that today, Lord, that you have your way in this service, Lord. Remember the sick, the shut-in, the bereaved, Lord, the incarcerated, Lord. Our children, Lord, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those, Lord Jesus, that don't even know you, Lord Jesus, give them an opportunity to know you in the real way, Lord Jesus. A holy and a perfect way, Lord Jesus. Save souls today, Lord Jesus. Again, Lord, we ask that you remove anything, Lord Jesus. Come against your word, your people, Lord. Because we know the battle is already won, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We are more than conquerors, Lord. Because we love you, Lord Jesus. And you will provide those things that are needed in our lives. Let us, hallelujah, again, learn to just show more love, Lord Jesus. More consideration. Hallelujah. More peace, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Those things that don't matter, Lord. Let us not make them matter in our lives, Lord Jesus. But only you and your word matters, Lord, your love. And we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord. Save someone today. Deliver someone today, Lord Jesus. Set someone free today, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Let someone go down in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of their sins today, Lord Jesus. And let us be used again, Lord, as you, hallelujah, have already predestined us to be, Lord Jesus. And we'll be careful to give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. And we thank you again, Lord, for your blessings and your presence in this place. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
I'm reminded, sometimes when you're going through something, it don't always feel good, right? Sometimes when the Lord is moving you to a different place, we get a little uncomfortable. Doesn't mean that it's not good for you. It just means he's doing something a little different. So sing with me, hallelujah, as I sing gracefully broken. Because when he breaks us, it doesn't hurt. It just is, it's a simple bend to get us to go into a different direction of where he needs us to be. Hallelujah. Sing with me, hallelujah, if you know the words. Worship with me, hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Uh, so we, we're doing things just a little different. And before we get started, our teens, our teens can head down to their service. That's ages. I know 12 is not a teen, but 12 on up. 12 on up can head down to that service for our teens. You can head down at this time. Um, this month, we are talking about um, finances and financial literacy. And we're going to use the Bible and some practical means to help you out. Once again, remember, um, I am not pushing you to any one company. Uh, we want you to make a, a good decision for yourself. Make a good decision for yourself uh, because we are all in different places. So some of the information we're going to give you may, may work good if you're in your 20s and some may work good if you're in your, your 70s. But uh, regardless, we want to give you that information. Amen. All right. So I'm going to first start off uh, with our, our Bible portion. And we have Brother Nelson with us. And he's going to take us a little further in um, solving some of your insurance needs. So he's going to look at that for us. But uh, scripturally, I want, just to, want us to turn to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, uh, verses 15 through 19. Matthew 25, verses 15 through 19. If you have it and you are able to stand, please stand. Uh, we're going to stand for this portion of it. Matthew 25, verses 15 through 19. Uh, well, actually, let's go 14 through 19. 14 through 19. Um, we'll do that. And then after which, we'll go into our, our portion and... Just a reminder, today is game day, game day, so uh, we will have the game on and we will have some food for you afterwards. Uh, there's a place called Chipotle that um, has provided our meal. To, well, I can't say they provided it. We paid for it. <laughs> they cooked it. <laughs> so we invite you to stay for that in fellowship with us. Um, and Dr. Cummins, I want to make sure that that calendar that got out the the. Okay, so at the desk downstairs, where is it? Or the ushers have it? Okay, so the ushers have uh, our, our, our newsletter that goes out. They have that too. After service, they'll pass those out. All right, Matthew chapter 25, starting at verse number 14. If you have it, let us read together. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your word. We thank you, Lord God, for your loving kindness and truth that you bring to us. Lord, allow us to be wise, good, faithful stewards unto you. Allow us, Lord God, to be able to walk according to your will and your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Uh, once again, we thank uh, Brother Nelson for being a part of our, our service today. And uh, I just want to ask you just, just, just briefly, did you see um, any of that Ohio State game yesterday? First of all, let me say before I say, first giving <laughs> honor to God who is the head of my yes, life. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Let me just say this. I am so mad that this Big Ten has got all these great teams in it. I mean, it used to just be Ohio State and Michigan and everybody else right, fell in. Right. Now we got USC and Oregon. Man, O State may not win the Big Ten for the next five years. I don't know. Let me just put it out there. It's just too much challenge right now. But it's okay. Oh, uh, y'all don't like that? Okay. All right. That's so cool. I'm going to take it. You saw it. You saw it, right? Man, let me tell you something. I was out to dinner. <laughs> 
I lost my appetite. I ate my whole plate though, but right. yeah. So I, I'm I'm going to say I, I I am still a little sick from from yesterday. Uh, uh, yeah. And I'm I'm going to tell you if if we look at what happened at the end of the game, time became an issue. Mm -hmm. Time. They had the ability, they were moving the ball, and I had faith and belief, okay, they can score, but time became an issue on the one play where there was a penalty and the play didn't go out of bounds, the clock kept running. But if the penalty happened um, and they went out of bounds or if it was on the other side of the team, then the clock would have stopped. So you, you have to know the rule in order to realize that clock is still running. Right. But they were operating like they had time when time was running out. And uh, I want to correlate that to today's message, are you ready? Are you ready? And a lot of times in life, we can just believe we had times. I, I, I think especially in our, our youth, our younger years, you know, we think we're going to pretty much live on forever. You know, we got a lot of time down the road. We're not running out. You know, when I, when I get older, when I retire, at the end of my life, you know, all those things. But uh, tomorrow's not promised. Mm -hmm. Our time can be gone, you know, in a moment, um, in a twinkling of an eye. So when we look at this passage um, in, in Matthew 25, we, we have what they refer to as the, the Olivet Discourse. Jesus is speaking to his disciples, and he's talking to them about being ready for the kingdom of heaven. And he starts off, he begins to talk to them about the virgins with the lamps and the oil, when, you know, some it run out, some it doesn't, and so forth. But here, when he gets to this, Jesus is teaching about the coming of the kingdom of heaven, and our need, not only for readiness, but faithfulness. This parable is coming um, uh, around the same time as I said, he mentioned the, 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 the virgins, the ten virgins. But the bigger message is that when Christ returns, there's accountability. There's accountability. You know, sometimes people say, I just want to make it in. <laughs> but there's accountability. Yes, we want to make it, but, but there's an accountability to the life that we are living. This master that gives the talents out uh, to his subjects, he goes on a journey, and before he leaves, he entrusts them with talents. He gives them something. He says, you know, and, and this is the parable. Jesus says, for it was like a man going on a journey who calls his servants and entrusts them with property. Uh, when we look at this, when we look at his departure, this is similar to Jesus when he departs and ascends up into heaven. He says, he tells the disciples, I'm going to go, but I'm coming back again. The disciples now have to continue to work. The talents are not natural abilities. When we read in the scripture, it talks about the talents. This is a sum of money. The talent that he gave them was a sum of money. And this sum of money, this one talent, is equivalent to 20 years of work. Mm -hmm. One talent is equivalent to 20 years of wages for labor. So this enormous amount signifies the weight and the significance of what God entrusts to us. One talent was like 20 years of labor. So now the master, Jesus, entrusts his wealth to his servants, us. And we have to look and now understand that God gives us resources, opportunities, 
and spiritual gifts. Mm-hmm. See, sometimes we just talk about the you know the spiritual gifts that God has given us. No, God gives you resources. He gives you opportunities and spiritual gifts. So now, I need you to also understand one person got five. Mm -hmm. One person got what? Three? Two? And then the last one got what? One. So now that indicates to me that God passes out according to what we're able to handle. You got one and you mad about five. Well, what you doing with the one? God knows our capacity and he gives us responsibility accordingly. But regardless of how much you got, you're expected to be faithful. So what happens? The one who receives five talents, at once, he trades with them. He made five talents more. The one who had two talents, he goes out with the two talents and he makes two more. But the one who had received one talent, 20 years, so you think it one and thinking it's nothing, 20 years worth of wages. He digs a hole in the ground and he hides the money. Two servants get to work. They put the talents to use and they multiply what God, they double what God gave them. The third servant hides what God gave them. How many people are hiding what God gave you? Why would this servant hide it? Trying to avoid risk. Mm -hmm. What if I lose it? Mm -hmm. Fearful. I'm scared something may happen. Uh, What if I don't fulfill the master's expectations? The faithful servants take action immediately. They don't delay. They don't wait. They're not looking for favorable conditions. I'm not going to go out because it's a little cloudy out today. So I can't go job hunting today because it might rain on me. That don't sound like somebody that want a job. <laughs> sound like somebody that's ready to stay in and, and, and watch something on TV and, and, and eat some, some Oreos and some, some popcorn. <laughs> So we have to watch that we are not waiting for favorable conditions because God doesn't need favorable conditions. They used what they were given right away. So what that demonstrates is active faith. I got faith in God. Well, you know, before I, I, I start moving in this, this, this ministry, and I, I'm not saying, the, like the Bible tells us, study to show yourself approved. It, it tells us that we should do work. But this is the problem. Well, I, I go back to me. I, I remember uh, when I was called into the ministry and I told my father, you know, you know the Lord, Lord's calling me. You know, this is the way I'm, you know, going to finally receive it because I was fighting it. Mm-hmm. Fighting it. Anybody, anybody ever have to uh, fight uh, what God wants you to do? Because it's, it's sometimes scary. So I was fighting it. And finally I submitted. And my father began to uh, talk to me about ministry. He began to talk to me about sermon building, all those kind of things. And then he told me, okay, now work on your first sermon. Well, I, I, I want to say it was like, like two, three months later. He was like, how's that sermon coming? <laughs> I'm still working on it, Dad. I'm still working on it. So then when I took him my sermon, I, I showed it to him. He's like, you got like six sermons here. What is this? <laughs> because I said, I'm scared that I'm going to get up front and run out of words. 
So I said, I got a whole lot of words. I got a whole lot of stuff to talk about. I got a whole lot of message. And he was like, yeah, this, <laughs> this is way too much. But, but look at all the time I, I, I was spending. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with preparation. But the thing is, some people just prepare and they never execute. So we got to be, because the preparing is also uh, turning into the crutch. I'm, I'm not going to step out. I'm still working on it. I'm still studying. I'm still praying. I'm still preparing. And we got to be able to take that active faith. Now, now, let me put my disclaimer. Don't just get out there, jump out, and do whatever either. <laughs> you ain't praying. You up here trying to do something. No, no, no. The preparation is necessary, but it can't turn into the crutch that you, you're not willing to start taking action. Um, so this active, faithful faith is shown by two servants. But the third servant, I want you to understand something that we see in the third servant. The third servant shows lack of initiative, fear of failure, the hiding of the talent the resources what God gave them. So, so let me turn it here. That means, too, if God has blessed you financially and you hide what you have and you're unwilling to share and help others, that's hiding that resource. Now, you may think you're successful. Look at the finances I have. But you hide them. You won't use them to help or be a blessing to anyone else. Same thing with your spiritual gift. You're the best singer in the world, and all you do is sing at home. <laughs> shower. I'm a shower singer. <laughs> but it's got to stay there. It's got to stay there. <laughs> so, so, what, so what we're looking at is uh, th th this leads us. I need you to understand this. When, when you're like the man with one talent, and you bury it, you hide it, what happens is you're now headed towards your downfall. It's not okay. You're headed towards your downfall because what you're doing is you're missing opportunities due to your laziness. Missing opportunities due to your laziness. When the master returns, the servants come and they begin to settle their accounts with him. And he who had five talents comes forward, he brings the five. He who has two, he comes forth, he brings the two. And what happens is uh, the master says to them, well done, thy good and faithful servant. We want to hear well done. We like affirmation. You did great. It was beautiful. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over little. Now I will set you over much. Some of you can't have much because you're not faithful with little. If you can't manage one store, how do you go to the owner of the company and say, let me manage 10 more? They're going to say, you, you're not doing right with one. So with the resources, with the opportunities, and with the, the, the talent that God gives you, what are you doing with it? And after he says, I will set you over much, he says to them, enter into the joy of your master. So now your joy is also linked to what you're doing with what God has given you. Some people are unhappy. You're not unhappy because you don't have. You're unhappy because you're not, you're not doing anything with what you got. And that's where I think we get mixed up because we're looking at other people. We're looking at other things. And hey, they multiplied and they got five more over here. They multiplied and they got two more over there. How come it's not me? Because it's buried. The faithful servants are praised by God for using their resources well. And their reward is greater responsibility. 
And that responsibility, I want you to understand, is in the kingdom of God. Our faithfulness leads to more opportunities to serve God in his kingdom. And this faithfulness in this life leads us to sharing in the joy of the next life. I want to say that one more time. <laughs> Our faithfulness in this life leads us to the joy that's in the next life. That eternal life that God offers us. The third servant has excuses for his inactivity. He accuses the master of being harsh and unreasonable. So look at the relationship that the third servant has with God. Look at this. Uh, uh, to the, to the, in, in verses 24 through 27, it says, He who also had received the one talent came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered not seed. So I was afraid. And I went and I hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master answered him, you wicked and slothful servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gathered where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers and at my coming, I should have received what was my own with interest. So the excuse now is that the master is harsh and unreasonable. If our relationship with God is he's harsh and he's unreasonable, we're in trouble. He uses fear for his reason of no action. But the master rebukes him and calls him out. And says you lazy and wicked. So this teaches us that the servant's understanding of who God was was incorrect. And that if the servant was afraid, there was still a way he could have been operating wisely. He said you could at least put it in the bank. You could at least did something safe with it if you were scared to multiply it. The one talent is taken now from that unfaithful servant and is given to the servant who now has 10. So now this gives us a spiritual principle. This gives us a spiritual principle. Those who faithfully use what God gives them will receive more. But those who fail to act on God's gifts will lose the little they have. <laughs> See, we don't think that God ever going to cause us to lose it. But he said, I'm, I'm not going to keep this opportunity in your court and you're not taking advantage of it. I'm not going to keep pouring resources to you and you don't know how to use them. So he takes it and he gives it to those who are willing to do something with it. The unfaithful servant is cast into utter darkness. And this is separation from God. So when we're lazy, when we're slothful, when we're scared, when we won't do, when we always plan it but never come into action, we are in danger of separating ourselves from God. Those who are faithful in small things are given more. But spiritual stagnation, spiritual negligence leads to loss. And here's the thing, it makes sense. Why would God keep giving you something if you're not going to do anything with it? I mean, God is a wise God. 
And if you're not going to take advantage of it, we're going to end up in a place where we either grow um, um, unfaithful and our actions diminish because we don't want to do anything God wants us to do. This is a warning. Don't waste your God-given opportunities, your God-given resources, and your God-given spiritual gifts. Don't waste them. It challenges us to use our gifts and our time wisely. Ultimately, I want you to understand uh, that, that we have to give an account for our stewardship. How, we, how are we managing? We got to give an account. And there's consequences, eternal consequence, question, consequences. <laughs> so now the question that we must ask ourselves is are we multiplying what God has given us, what God has entrusted to us, or are we bearing it? That's the big question. Because we're not supposed to be stagnant. Are we multiplying or are we burying? Mm -hmm. God has given us something valuable. Don't worry about what everybody else got. If, if you want to see more, be faithful with what you got. Mm -hmm. And then allow God to begin to multiply more in your life. So, it's important that we continue to look at ourselves as stewards. Last week we talked more about, this is God's. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And we all agree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this week I'm encouraging you to be faithful and multiply. Don't let fear get in your way. Don't let laziness get in your way. Don't let inactiveness get in your way. Uh, and, and if we will begin to have that relationship with God mm -hmm. where we don't see him as harsh cruel and unreasonable then we can look and see God move in our lives and increase our talents so now for the natural portion of this uh, we want to begin to look at and I'm going to ask uh, really Ellen in the back if you help us get this the screen to the monitors so we're trying something different today how we getting this there we're going to try to work on this computer and send it there and there so um, unless Ellen fell asleep back there Ellen you hear me you with me <laughs> <laughs> okay. You just got to clear that top top portion. There we go. All right. So we're going to look at solving your insurance needs. Now, once again, um, uh, Nelson, Brother Nelson is here to give us an overview. He, he's not going in depth with every single thing because some of these things are going to be uh, particular to your situation. It might not be to me. It might not be to, you know, someone over there, but it may be different for you. So we're, we're going to touch base and then... Um, We'll, we'll follow up. We may have questions, may not. We'll see how time goes. Well, before we even start, I want to just, um, I just want to give thanks, you know, to Pastor Keo and Lady Lisa, because when I was younger, okay, when I was a young kid, I, <laughs> well, I was just married and trying to figure things out in my life, they pulled me in and they saw this salesperson in me. I didn't want to be anything but a full-time worker at UPS. That's all I wanted to do. And they were like, no, you got it in you. You got it in you. And I was like, I don't know what they're talking about. I really don't. You know, but I went into this thing, and I got into sales, and um, you guys were the ones who introduced now, it. Now, Lady Lisa saw it. I didn't see it. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm playing. I, listen, let me tell you something. I, you, <laughs> we used, they used to take me around, and I would grab my people, and I would be like, who's going to help me sell today? When Lisa was there, I knew I was going to make the sale. When Kiro was, was there, at Brother Elder Kiro, I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I might not get this one. <laughs> no, I'm just No, I'm with you. I wish you. I wanted to say this, so yeah. it's not just like no. <laughs> <laughs> But you know what? That thing I did not know. For you guys seeing the opportunity in me allowed me, I mean, this is 20-something years later, mm -hmm. to really, really know who I am. I actually have walked into this thing, and my story really, really started 
from you guys. And then also, I had a grandfather. My grandfather had a stroke. And he had a very great job. He worked for the city of Cleveland. He worked there for a long time. And my grandfather had a stroke, and he had excellent benefits. Excellent. But when he went into the nursing home, guess what they said? Sir, Grandpa's been here for 20 days. He has to go. Well, um, how much money do we have left? I mean, how much is it? Well, at that time, I think it was $225 a day, mm -hmm. per day. Mm -hmm. So if you do the math, you're talking some multiple thousands of dollars every year. Now, fortunately, my grandfather was a wise person, so some of the stuff that I'm going to show you all is what he showed me. And he was able to pay for years from using insurance and investing. My grandfather died a millionaire. He never made more than $8 an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, well, two millionaire. Mm -hmm. But he never made more than $8 an hour. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show you guys what was taught to me. So it was a lot of little things and just getting into this. So I worked for a company. I, I worked for a company called Life Business and Benefits. It's my company, okay? I'm a broker, okay? What a broker is is a person who handles multiple different situations and multiple different things. And I've gone through this period of teaching agents and clients and everyone the secret strategies that people don't tell you. They don't tell you. That actually aligns with the scripture that pastor just talked about. So let's get into this. All right, so who we are, we are an insurance brokerage. We help people understand how their insurances work. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter what situation you're in. Our job is to evaluate where you are and what you need, okay, and to tell you everything. So we started, I started off with seniors, and then I kept moving on and kept moving and kept moving, and I started dealing with every situation. So the seniors, we were like, hey, we're going to help you. And the younger people, we were like, hey, we don't want you to get like these seniors because they're real messed up now. You know, we didn't want to do that. So we, we developed a system, a system of training and teaching and educating, making, making sure people understand how their benefits work. So we sell strategies. So if anybody comes and says, Brother Nelson, what's the best insurance company? I'm not going to tell you the best insurance company. I'm going to tell you the best strategy. The best strategy for what you're doing. So there are six major, I do a lot of stuff, but there are six major things that I focus on, okay? Um, and these are our little categories, as you guys can see it. Uh, we have Introduction to Medicare, which teaches you how Medicare works. Now, I know a lot of you are getting calls right now, so if you don't want them calling you, you just call me. I'll take care of it, okay? <laughs> All right? Uh, but there's a lot of plans leaving this year. You might want to make those calls because the letters are coming in the mail now, okay? But we help you understand Medicare, how it works, what it's going to pay for. We also do something called Social Security Lost Income. Everyone says, oh, man, I got life insurance, but you don't know what's going to happen when you pass. You don't know how your Social Security is going to work with that. You don't know how much money you're going to lose if a spouse passes on. We help you understand those things. We also do health care solutions. Health care uh, is the hardest thing, especially for people who are not 65. Okay, because you've got ACA and you've got you've got this kit plan and this plan, deductibles, all this other stuff. We try to help you understand what's the best solution for you. We do final expense planning, but instead of just doing final expense planning, we actually put you with a program that helps you. They give you a will and they help. They do um, com a complete service to make sure if you are in your time of loss they'll take care of everything for you so it doesn't put any problems or bear, um, you know, bear a lot on a family member who's losing, who, who's in a time of grieving. Mm -hmm. So we have a funeral planning service. And then we do mortgage protection, which is if you buy a home and you want to protect your house, we teach you how to do that. Yes. Correct. Right. The next one is whole life. Mm -hmm. Now, the whole life, now term life is normally ch the cheapest. Right. 
It's the most, it's the least expensive. So that's the one that you guys call and say, hey, let me, yeah, I need some insurance. Let me get something. What you got for $20? Term, okay? <laughs> Term, all right? Whole life, what they do is they take the mortality rate of your age, where you are, and they go out about 100, 120 years. Am I right, Sister Bree? About 120? Yeah. 120 years, and they calculate a rate based off of how long, how your age and your health at that age over the next 120 years, and you have to pay that premium. Now, it does gain cash value. And depending on which company you, you're with, you can make a lot of cash value or you can make a little. It depends on what company, what product, how it works, okay? But it lasts for the rest of your life. So you can go to your whole life plan and say, hey, yeah, I want to borrow a $1,000 from my plan. And they'll take it. They'll give it to you, okay? If it's in there. If it's in there, they'll, take, they'll give it to you and they'll take it off the death benefit, okay? Now... The Index Universal Life, what they did is something totally different. They took the term life, which is the mortality rate based off of someone's life at their age, okay, and then... Oh, okay, thank you, Siri. <laughs> Didn't know you were talking to me. Okay, um, but what they do is they take the term life premium, okay, so that you don't pay as much, and then they spread, they look at the entire life, okay, they, of your whole life, and they invest a portion of the money in the market in something called index credits, okay? So basically, when the stock market goes up, your money goes up. When the, and there is no limit to... You know, I'm, I'm just letting you know, there's no limit to how much you can make, okay? Because each company has something called caps and different things like that. And they just, one of my companies just came and said, basically, you can make double of whatever the market makes. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter. Nonstop. Double. If the market made 20%, you got a 40% added to your policy. But... What it does is it continues to grow your, your money. It continues to grow, continues to grow, continues to grow. Now, we're going to get into this. There are some benefits. Now, can, to it, this. can it lose money? You said no? Or no. Can? So if it, if it goes up, let's just say 20000 because of the stock, mark, stock market, and then it's, the stock market hits a crash, I'm still at that last spot I was? You're still at, you still gain money. Okay. OK, so in 2008, I usually show people a strategy. And if you guys call, I'll show it to you. In 2008, the market had a 40 percent. It was in a negative 40 percent, negative 40 percent. Woo! my God. But people who were in this product were in a positive 0.75. They never lost. So let's keep moving. Let's let's keep talking about this, because there are some there are some keys to this. Now, I know some of you guys see this on TikTok. <laughs> this is hot on TikTok. A lot of people are watching this, and they're like, man, well, I want one of those. So let's talk about this. Let's just look. This is one of our companies. Well, I'm saying you got to be, that's got to be in your feed. Otherwise, you might be getting videos of dogs and <laughs> makeup and other things I, like that. They're doing it with advertising. <laughs> okay, so this actually talks about the... Uh, the yeah, Tigers. I'm, right. I've got the little video, but I'm not going to play that video. So we're going to go on and keep moving. All right. So this is a permanent policy. This is the benefits of it. It's tied to the market index. Okay. The minimum, there's a guaranteed minimum interest rate. So you're guaranteed to make money. Guaranteed. And tax-free withdrawals through policy loans. This is the key. No taxes. But we do need we do need to make sure everybody understands it's a loan. You are paying yourself back. You're not keeping the money. Hold on, you 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 beat me to the punch, Pastor. Okay. You have we got to. I'm you sorry. Got, you got to understand sorry. the function of this product. All right. And how it works. 
Flexible premiums. This is one of the only premiums that you can come in and have that premium and then call back and say, hey, listen, I can't afford this this month. What can I do? And they'll say, oh, pay what you want. <laughs> to pay, pay the lower amount. Pay the lowest amount. Okay? This is one of the only programs that will do that. And then tax deferred accumulation. So not only are you able to take the money out with no taxes, but it's also growing tax deferred. Okay. Well, hold on, let's, let's clear. When, when you take it out as a loan, there's no taxes. But if I, I mean, am I ever, are you ever able to pull out and keep without paying back? Or do you always have to pay back? Okay. Because I'm, so, I'm thinking almost like an a, a annuity or something along those lines that you can pull out so much once you pass the retirement age and all that other kind of stuff. So it all ba it's all based on how we strategize it. Okay. So one of the things is as you are growing, as your money is growing, the policy is growing in there. So let's say you had a million dollars, okay? Mm -hmm. You have a million dollars of death benefit in there and you want to take $30,000 of cash value out. What they would do is they would take the money, the 30000 that you have in there, and they would give you a loan. But they would give you a loan off your death benefit, which is multiple millions of dollars or, or millions of dollars. Right, a million. Dollars. A million. Right, right. So, you would get, so your beneficiary would receive a million dollars minus the money you borrowed. But what happened to your money? You never, see, I'm going too fast, but I'm letting you know. Right. Go ahead. You never touch your money. Your money sits there and continues to grow interest-free. So you borrow from your death benefit. Do I have to pay that 30000 back? If you want your beneficiary to receive a million dollars. Gotcha. Okay. But if your beneficiary is cool with nine hundred and seventy thousand, they ain't got. They, they, ain't, they didn't complain. put in, so they don't have a choice on <laughs> what they say. They don't have a choice. <laughs> no, but I got what you're saying. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, now, what we did was a comparison between the three or through different things that we have taught. We were taught to invest in. So the first one was the bank. Okay. Now, who thinks that putting your money, if you want to save money for a house and all that stuff, you think throwing your money in a bank account is the best thing? Yeah. Not for me, it's not best because I know once I see it, I'm going to grab it. I'm honest. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Every time I see it, if I got money right here, this is, this is my baby's college fund, but yet I need a new car. I'm going to look and say, man, I can't pay for your college if I can't get to work. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, no. Every time you so see it. So there go baby's there, college there fund. There go baby's college fund right there. <laughs> now, what about a CD? Yeah, back in the, in the 50s, <laughs> you know, maybe. You know, my grandfather had a bunch of annuities and IRAs and CDs. Back then, you could get a good CD. Now, you're talking about 1.8%. Now, if you want to know how much that is, if you put $100 in a CD, that means that you made $1.80 that year. And then you got to pay taxes on that, too. All right? So, no. Now, what about this? We Pastor talked about this last week, and this is the one that everybody loves. The reason why you love it is because they take it out without you thinking about it. That's the reason why we love it. The 401K, 403B, Roth, all that other stuff, we love it because they take it without you thinking about it. That's the reason why we love it. But we talked about 2008. And I know people that lost $600,000 in their 401k. I know personally. Okay? So you got fees, taxes on growth, penalties when you take your money out early. You know, you, with most of these IRAs, you got to be 59 and a half before you can touch it. I'm getting close, getting close. <laughs> you still look young, Pastor. You still look young. <laughs> All right. And then market volatility, like we said, 2008, everybody lost money like crazy, okay? But the benefits of the IUL, like I said, there's no loss of principal, great earning potential, tax-deferred growth, liquidity, tax-free withdrawals via policy loans, low fees for withdrawals, death benefits, and more. You also have income replacement. You know these policies pay a pension? Y'all, I'm telling y'all something. I've been all over the world um, doing this, selling these policies and training and teaching people. 
And it, it shocked me when I found out I went to a lady's house and she had no problems, no issues. She was getting a pension check every month from an insurance policy she took out when she was younger. And when I mean a pension check, she made $80,000 a year off of the insurance policy. I ain't talking about her being dead, and I'm not talking about her spouse passing. Her own policy, income prote uh, protection, critical illness. Okay, if y'all don't know, these are other insurances that you're gonna have to buy. Heart attack, stroke, cancer, these type of insurances. These things are not even covered. Like, you may have a traditional healthcare plan, but you got a $20,000 deductible. Who got $20,000 in the bank? But these plans will help you. They'll pay for those things. Family coverage during death benefits, so you can put your whole family on one plan. Okay. About, I, I, we, we gotta be mindful of, if, if you make a certain amount of money, Medicare is not necessarily going to be beneficial to you, but if you're able to, uh, I'll say, I would say disperse your money in other areas and it doesn't show your income looking the same, then you may be more eligible for some Medicare results and so forth. So what were you going to say about so, Medicare? Okay, so Medicare is a different situation. Medicare is for people who are 65 or older or people who have been on disability for at least two years. Okay, um, this is when the government says that they will take care of a portion of your health coverage. So original Medicare gives you two parts, which is Medicare Part A and Medicare Part B. Now, people come in and be like, yeah, I got me A, B, and a D, okay? All right, part D is a prescription drug plan, okay? But based off of, you know, Medicare is gonna be based off of those main things, which is, are you on disability? Or, I mean, for two years, or end-stage renal kidney disease is another one, or if you are 65 and older. There's a short window that we have that we can give you plans that will cover everything that you need. And <laughs> Zero premium, okay? And I'm talking about with some of the top companies, Aetna, Humano, Cigna, WellCare. No cost. Why would I go with that program? Well, those programs can help me and where I, where, I, where, I, where I need help. You know, they have um, help with your prescriptions. You get dental, vision, hearing, 100% health coverage. Some people get gym memberships for free. Some people get money for free. Help with rent. A health care plan helping me with my rent? These things are there. So if we have the right, so what's the, if you could say brief, what's the window based on? Well, right now, it's funny you guys called because Tuesday starts open enrollment, Okay. And that's the time that everybody has to make their decision for next year's uh, plans, okay? Just like when we were at work or for some people who are still working, you have open enrollment every year, you get to choose what you're doing. Well, that's the same thing um, with the Medicare. Open enrollment starts on Tuesday, and you guys should call, especially if you are on Medicare, I would tell you to call me immediately because there's a bunch of plans that are leaving and people don't even know it. So let, uh, let me ask you this. What, what if, what if I, I hit the, the, the age for Medicare, I can get in all that, but I don't really pick a plan. Do you know what happens? Uh, if, you'll be on Medicare. Nothing, or do they just enroll me automatically in a basic? They'll enroll you in a basic, but you're responsible for 20% of whatever the bills are. So oh you, you slip and fall coming from church because you was Why has got to be from church? Yeah, it don't have to, <laughs> this is where we be. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Right, okay, all right. But no. But, but there's different options. And you don't have if, to say church. We can say no, bingo. No, say, Do they? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's go. Um, but, but there are different choices, different plans, and, and you can walk through people through what those different plans look like. Correct. Now, Correct. now let's touch on Social Security. I believe we talked about how if, if you and a spouse are on Social Security and uh, one of them transitions, called home to be with the Lord, that that changes the dynamics. Correct, okay, so with Social Security, um, Social Security, what they do is they look at the last few years of your life and how much money you made, and there's a calculation that they have on how much you are going to receive. 
Now, there's some there's some factors that will affect that. If you've never paid into Social Security, that will affect it. Okay. If you work for, and there's companies, you know, that their Social Security is different. Like if you work for here in Ohio, PERS, STRS, their their thing is a little bit different. Yeah, it's a little bit. You may think you're gonna get a nice Social Security. Ah, right, no, it's gonna it's gonna be real little, and they're gonna give you a pension from your job. Okay. But whatever it is, if you are in your later years in life and you and your spouse have been living off of an income, you're pretty much on a fixed income until that spouse comes or leaves. And when that spouse leaves, that income is too little for you to survive on your own because you lose your spouse's income, but too much for you to get help from the government like Medicaid in most cases. So then this would be, we would be looking for an alternative to help make up that, that Correct. difference? Correct. Okay. So we would look at different insurances to replace the income that you may lose. All right. Last thing, what was, what was the death? Um, um, the final expense. Okay, so that was when um, most people need burial insurance, okay? Now, burial insurance is um, it's a, it's a very necessary thing. Okay, because death can come at any point. But this has nothing to do with like having a lot of money left over. This is just for services and burial and so forth. What we do is a little bit different. We do a legacy planning service, which we don't just look at giving you, oh yeah, let me give you a $10,000 policy. That $10,000 policy may not buy the casket, you know? Just being honest, okay? Um, what we do is we give you a service who does it all for you, okay? And they will actually help you, and they'll provide you. Um, they have will preparation. They help you with your estate. They help you lock your records so that people, if someone passes away and you need records, they know how to get to them, okay? They know how to get those things. Now, I know you're saying, Nelson, I mean, I know how to get to my, my bank account, my such and such. Well, you know, if you pass away, First of all, when they find out, they lock that bank account. They'll lock it. If you do not have it set up correctly, they will lock it. And here in Ohio, you can go to probate, and probate is over 33 months. Just letting y'all know. I got 100000 in the bank, but you can't get to it for about three years. So how you, who's going to pay for that funeral? Now, so this program and one of our programs actually will pay you in as little as two days. Okay. Which that last week you asked about the uh, the two year thing mm -hmm. when you asked Sister Amy Neal and she 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 threw me an alley oop y'all she was setting me up real good <laughs> she did so uh, shout out Sister Amy mm -hmm. all right but as we were saying um, these final expense plans what we do is we do pre planning and we help you understand your particular situation so our. No matter who you are, how good you are, or how bad you think you are, the God of the universe wants to be known by you. And he stands at the door and knocks. This is our God. Think about this. God knew you before he formed you in your mother's womb, before you were even flesh. He knew everything about you before you breathed your first breath. And now, now that you're here living and breathing, the God of the universe desires so deeply to be close with you. This is our God. You see, God is fascinated with you. He is constantly pursuing you. He wants an intimate connection with you. He wants fellowship with you. And if you open your heart to him, he will speak life into you. This is our God. When life is tough, 
when jobs are lost, when marriage gets hard, when it seems like all hope is lost, the God of the universe is your protector and your shield. He is the sovereign one. He is the beginning and the end. And there is no curveball that he did not see coming. There is no storm so loud that he won't hear your cry. And God is always with you. He's the God that goes before you. He's the God that goes behind you. He is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. He loved you so much. He gave his only son for you. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. And there is nothing you can do that can separate you from the love that the Father has for you. This is our God. He's not some distant thought or some unreachable object. He's here. He's alive right now. And his greatest desire is to know you, to walk with you, to live with you, to speak with you, to pour out his love on you.